and thanks for staying with us. Nigerian Customs Service Image winner of 2022 Technology Award in Abuja. Was on Customs Support, KB Command in Pan Letters of Smuggle PMS for smugglers operating along the nation's borderline. Plus, more report. I am Igiseme Etienne. Stay tuned. <laughs>
in the year 2021. This represents an improvement on the FOB by 34.4%. And this increase is attributed to the high quality and value of the exported commodities. However, the export report shows a decrease in tonnage of export from 1,723,000 in 2021 to 336 thousand one million in, in yeah, three hundred and thirty six thousand in twenty twenty two. The decrease in tonnage could be connected to current government fiscal policies which prohibited the export of wood and wood products, as well as the global unrest <coughs> which is concomitant economic challenges. The commodities exported through this command includes <coughs> cocoa beans, insecticides, dry ginger, empty bottles, soya beans, cashew nuts, cigarettes, rubbers, cocoa bottles, frozen shapes, cocoa copper ingots, aluminum ingots, sesame seeds, and other manufactured items. Cocoa beans as the highest, was the highest exported commodity within while legion stout was the least exported commodity. The future of export in the commands looked bright as the command in line with headquarters circular on export standard operating procedure released the port order on the command's harmonized standard operating procedure for the seamless facilitation of export trade in strict compliance with extant laws and guidelines on export. The command appreciates all stakeholders and 60 government agencies involved in the export chain with special commendation to the Nigerian Ports Authority for their seamless collaboration in facilitating the clearance procedure of export related cargo at the Tinkan Island Port Command. Implementation of evaluation and automation of the 846 procedure code. The operational processes of Nigeria Custom in the year under review strongly aligned with the team for the 2022 International Customs Day, which was scaling up custom digital transformation by embracing a data culture and building a data ecosystem. This is evident through the implementation of the VIM Valuation Service, a service that depends solely on the information stored on customs and third-party database to determine the value of an imported vehicle for the purpose of determining customs duty. The VIM Valuation has simplified, has simplified and facilitated the custom clearance process of legitimately imported vehicles by providing a uniform fair and neutral value across board on vehicles with identi identical brands, model and year of manufacture in line with provisions of Article 7 of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade of 1994. The Green Valuation Platform helped the command to achieve expedited clearance process due to the predictability of value assessment increase revenue generation, improve ease of doing business, as well as generation of accurate statistics for the federal government. It is pertinent to mention that most of the initial challenges at the early stages of the implementation have been reduced to the barest minimum, as the command built on both the successes and the challenges of the use of the financial regime 846 for non-standard and accidented vehicles that were not captured in the beam valuation service on the NICES with the use of financial regime 000. The financial regime 846 automated procedure was developed to allow the clearance submit, monitor, and track the status of the app applications online and in real time. I would mention for record purposes that the 846 
Electronic uh, 846 started in Tinkan Island port and is still ongoing in, in, in Tinkan Island port. It has not been introduced to other uh, commands because Tinkan Island port was used to pilot the uh, application so that we can deal with the challenges that comes with it before going national. But very soon, it will be replicated in all commands. Regardless, the, cost, the command, the web-based application automated the current manual process, thereby eliminating, eliminating paperwork, delays, document falsifications, and has increased revenue through enhanced processing time. It is nostalgic to note that despite the myriad of benefits of the system, the trainings organized for the stakeholders, and the creation of help desks with dedicated officers and phone numbers, recalcitrant stakeholders circumvent the platform, engage in falsification of documents, forge signatures, and insist on non compliance to the system. Regardless, the command is pushed to continuous building on the automation, simplification, standardization, harmonization of all custom processes in line with the revised Kyoto Convention and international best practices. We are eternally grateful to God Almighty for his protection, guidance, and wisdom throughout the year 2022. To our indefatigable and amiable contract general of customs, Cornell Ibrahim Amid Ali, retired MFR, and his management team, we express our profound gratitude for your immense support and persistent commitment towards enhancing the capacity of the service. To our dependable media friends, you are specially recognized as your objective criticism and reportage are moral posters. We do not take your partnership for granted. I heartily treasure the immense contribution of the command's management team, officers and men of the command, as well as heads of all headquarters units, like Oliver Twist. I appeal that the command continue to work as a team in order to achieve greater heights in 2023. In summary, the prognosis of the command for 2023 will include improved revenue profile, facilitation of legitimate trade, enhanced capacity and skills of officers and men of the command, and also because of the team of this year, what customs the, which says we should nurture the next generation, and that we should also share knowledge, and that we should also take pride in our profession. These are the keys. These are things we intend to also bring to fore in this year, 2023. Also, conscious efforts will be made on making the VIM valuation, the automated 846 procedure, as well as the deployment of the non-intrusive inspection technology platform work more effectively. This is in line with the projected modernization of all custom processes and procedures under the custom management modernization project. The Federal Opportunity Zone A has also imparted goods worth millions of Naira for smugglers who don't want to pay the right duty to government. The acting controller said that the customs will continue to impound goods not approved by government. He has this to say on imparted consignments at the command. This is calcium carbide. About 450 drums. That's 106 kg each. With DPV value of 24,577,340 naira. The status of this drug is still under detention because the owner said he has EUC for it. So we are waiting 
for the presentation of that EUC. Failure to produce the EUC within the time frame, then we have no any other choice to do what the law says, and we have to prosecute the person. You had this type of seizure last year. But can't we note that this is part of the byproduct of making bombs, ID. And uh, with our good eye officers, it is important and instructive, we note, that we have to go after such things, most especially those that are under restriction, that some people will use the opportunity to now bring those things in. In the sense that you have been seeing this, we have 11 motorcycles. This is how you see them, they will load the rice in the bush. And immediately, when an officer or a patrol team is sighted, they will just jump. In fact, if you see them running away, in fact, antelope can, they, they, they even run faster than antelope. So, we have about 11 vehicles here, and we have uh, uh, motorcycles, then vehicles, so many. But the total rice we have for the month of January is well over 5,000. We have harnessed our human resources and logistics for the prevention of economic sabotage. We did not only re-strategize our operations, but our officers are urged to be more professional and are keyed into the service standard operations procedure, SOP, aimed at facilitating legitimate trade. In doing this, we are assuring all compliant traders and importers that they have nothing to fear. While the recalcitrant ones are advised to desist because we are better mobilized with high morale to arrest, prosecute, and make them lose their wares in forfeiture to the federal government of Nigeria. Seizures recorded in January 2023 are a reflection of our officers' commitment to duty and no compromise posture in the discharge of our statutory responsibilities aimed at protecting the national economy and preventing the importation of prohibited and harmful goods. Prominent among the seizures are 5,481 by 50 kg bags of foreign parboy rice, equivalent to over nine trailer loads. 47,750 liters of premium motor spirit, 68 pieces of military camouflage, 314 pieces of used tires, 11 units of used motorcycles, 13 units of used motor vehicles, 450 by 106 kg drops of carbide. That one is under detention. These goods were intercepted along the border corridors of the Southwest for contravening different customs laws. 11 suspects were arrested in connection with some of the wares, while the Federal High Court had convicted three people for the crime of smuggling. The total DPV value of the seized goods is 517,918,700 Naira, while the sum of 86,117,398 Naira, 50 Kobo was recovered as revenue into the Federation account through the issuance of demand notices on custom duties that were discovered to be underpaid. Considering the spate of insecurity across the country and the upcoming general elections, it can be postulated that the importation of Indian hemp and military camouflage could be used to fuel crimes and electoral violence by unpatriotic elements. 
While the former is under prohibition, the latter are under the control and supervision of the Office of National Security Advisor, which requires end user certificates. Members of the public are hereby enjoined to key into the prevailing security concerns by providing useful, timely information that could expose and lead to the arrest of enemies of the state. Join me as I lead you to Government Warehouse for the handing over of 2,135 fraps, about weighing 1,163 kg of cannabis sativa, otherwise known as Indian hemp, to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, while I show you other seizures made within the period of that review. Just if you round up this week edition of the program, because some support, we brought you a report where good what millions of naira was impounded by various commands in the country. For me, it gives me a Thanks for watching.